Hey guys, welcome back. This is Storm and welcome to episode 159 of our single player Divina World. So we're over by the battle arena. This is where we left off things in the last episode, working on our trophy room here. And I made some changes to this room based on your feedback. So I removed just the generic skull placements on the sides. These little tribute stands to represent rather uh, significant events in the series. And so rather than just having something generic, We'll focus on specifics. So for example here, I believe this is the very first Wither fight I had in the series, way back in episode 15. And I'll put in the timestamp of the episode if you ever wanted to go back and check that out. So this is the, the first uh, thing of significance, I think. And then we had our Ocean Monument raid. I think that is noteworthy. So that was in episode 30. Then we had the Ender Dragon fight back in episode 74. And then we had our Woodland Mansion raid in episode 97. So there's a few more places to put things here, so you'll have to let me know if I've missed any other things of significance, or we could reserve these for future events. I might do a proper raid in this uh, series, and that could probably be noteworthy for this room, so I've got space for that, so I might consider that as well. And uh, I've also made a small change to the appearance of this room. It's pretty subtle, but I've uh, put in these banners on the sides and above the OP armor on the end. I think it nicely adds in a bit of blue as you walk on through, trying to kind of draws you in towards this OP armor on display down the end here. So I'm pretty happy with that. Alrighty, so we've made it over to the Ocean Monument area and this is where we're going to be building our Villager Trading Hall. And I'm going to build it in two phases. There's going to be a central hub area. This is where we can uh, call in a villager, change their trades, try and get some bargain deals. And then we're going to send the villagers off to either the left or the right, haven't decided just yet. And that's where the actual trading hall will be. So I've been working on clearing out this hub area and I have a very simple transition from this lower section up there at the moment. I might change this out, this could be just temporary, but for now I did need to get up a little bit higher because the redstone I need for this area needs to um, be four blocks deep. So I need to raise myself up so we've got enough room because the bedrock is right down there. So I've got this area and what I'm thinking of doing, I just went for this for the floor design. Uh, using the oak wood yeah maybe should i go with a stripped look version this could be a nicer look rather than having just the bark showing so the flooring is now complete so we're going to start working on the main hub outline and we're going to build it out of white concrete i think this is a nice contrasting block and we're also going to use stripped uh, dark oak wood i think that's also a nice color combination and this is going to be a selection panel on the side, and we're going to have the same on the opposite side. Then what we're building now is the main frame for the hub itself. So let's just build this up to the ceiling. This is going to be a second uh, switch area. We're going to have buttons, levers, different things on the sides. So something like that, and maybe to help to just visualize it. There you go, a couple of buttons. <laughs> so let's put that away, and then let's frame off uh, this area this is where all the action is going to be out the back now what i'm thinking of doing is i can probably just build this all the way around now so this is going to be basically a containment area for all the villager mechanics so let's just do that and grab ourselves a torch just make sure that no mobs spawn in these little back sections in fact i can build this up a little bit higher i think like this okay all right, so this is our frame. So what we're going to do is have a spot here for a minecart. So minecart's going to fall from up there, and then it's going to land right here. And then this is where we're going to have a zombie right here. And the best way to illustrate that is probably just to put down minecart for the time being. So this is where the zombie's going to be. Let's see if we can grab that rail back. So we'll try and capture a zombie. We'll have it sitting there. And then we'll have this... Uh, spot so the my cart with a villager will fall down land on this unpowered rail Get converted into a zombie villager and then we'll have it automatically move across into a curing chamber So for that we're going to build this out of iron bars I'm pretty sure this used to be a feature in the game where you used iron bars surrounding a zombie villager and you tried to cure them the Curing time would be a lot faster. I'm not sure if that's still a thing or it was removed but Either way, I think it looks pretty cool Okay, so this is what it's going to look like in a nutshell. Now, if we're going to have the zombie villager sitting here, it means we need to be able to 
throw it a, a weakness potion. So I'm going to use a dispenser for that. And let's just put in some more dark oak wood up the top here. So I want to put a button on top of this. And then we use a dispenser. So something like that. Let's grab ourselves a button. And then we can put a dispenser up there. Where's my lovely redstone box down here, I think. Let's grab this. I need to do a whole lot of redstone here, so I might as well get it up here now. Uh, okay, we need a dispenser. Get rid of these iron bars. Be like that. So when we push the button, this will shoot down a potion of weakness, and then that will uh, allow us to throw a golden apple at the zombie villager and then convert it into a normal villager. Now when the villager gets converted from the zombie villager to a normal villager, it's going to get ejected from the minecart and it actually gets displaced. It's the strange behavior in the game. The villager will fall one block lower. So what we're going to use is an iron bar. So the villager can fall through the iron bar, which will be extended through a sticky piston. And then we'll use a, a detector and uh, or observer rather which will then do some magic, retract this uh, sticky piston, allowing the minecart to fall through as well. So that's what we're currently thinking. So I'm going to work on the redstone underneath, basically hook this up, and then I'll talk you through it. So the redstone is now installed beneath this iron bar. So the idea is when the villager falls through, it's going to walk through this uh, tripwire, which the observer is going to observe, and that's going to send off a pulse, which I'm going to extend just using some repeaters here. And then I'm inverting it, so that's going to basically power the sticky piston. So it's always out, but when something falls through, you can see it gets retracted. So that's going to work okay. I have to figure out the timing to make sure it's going to work for us, but for now we just assume it's going to work. You can always troubleshoot later. And obviously when the minecart falls through, it's going to land here, hopefully pick up the villager, then send the villager around, then back up to here. And this is where we can switch out the trades. So that's that part pretty much done. I think what we'll work on next is where the villager is going to fall down. And then we need the zombie that's going to be sitting in this minecart to be able to convert it. So this is a pretty simple setup. I saw this being used by Iskal85. And I really like the design, the simplicity of it. I didn't realize the uh, zombie villager when uh, converts from a normal villager to a zombie villager that they actually jump up a little bit. And that was a nice mechanic. So I'm going to use a similar kind of setup that we use down here with some string and an observer to basically control when this unpowered rail becomes powered to move the zombie villager in the minecart across to over here. So the redstone for this component is now complete. You can see we've got the observer with the string, basically the same setup we had for down here. And the minecart track is just up there. So the villager in the minecart is going to fall down this hole and then because of the observer sending a very short pulse, it's either going to leave behind uh, this redstone block like it is right now, or it's going to pull it back in. So this sticky piston will work that magic, creating basically a T flip flop, which will either power or unpower this line of redstone, which will either power or unpower this powered rail. So that's the theory. <laughs> that should all work for us. And then up the top here, where we've got the minecart track, what I'm going to do is bend this around. So let's get rid of this powered rail grab ourselves a normal rail. I'm going to install a crusher mechanic here for the villagers. So the actual villagers will come in from this direction somewhere, somewhere out there. And then what will happen is they'll land onto this spot. We'll have a powered rail or something like that. And then we'll have a block that will get extended into them, lowering their health. So basically when they fall down this one spot just here with a zombie villager or just a zombie rather, uh, it should be a one hit kill that's what we're going for all right so let's see how we can build this thing need to come up a couple of blocks here and make this come along so this would be where the minecart will be traveling then we need a detector rail then we need to basically grab the pulse from this so let's just put down a few blocks something like that all right now we need a comparator we're going to basically extend this pulse that we get from the minecart traveling over this detector rail. And hopefully six will be enough. If not, we can always add more delay. And then just put a block there. So this will slowly decay, reducing the signal down. 
And we need now to grab this signal strength. In fact, we can do it right underneath this block. Put down a redstone dust, then run this into a sticky piston. So we can just put that right there. So as this redstone is being powered, this block will be extended, pushed into the villager sitting in the minecart, drawing down its health. Let's extend that up. Oh, one thing I need to do is power this powered rail. So where can we... Oh, <laughs> this should probably work. We just put a torch right there. So this will invert this redstone signal. So when the minecart is sitting here, this will be powered off, getting its... Uh, <laughs> death on by the crusher and then once it's finished crushing this will be turned on again and then the minecart will travel along. So that should work out quite well for us. So I think I've just had a brilliant idea what we should do with this space right here because this is the opposite of where we have the villager trading hole out this direction. Why don't we store the villagers sitting here so we can bring them in from a different area make them go into maybe a single column or something like that and then we get a minecart to pick up one of the villagers send them up to the crusher, send them down to the zombie so they get converted into the zombie villager. We then convert them into a villager again, and then we can change their traits. So that could be a nice contained kind of little setup here. So let's create ourselves a little spot here where we can get the villagers to hang out and then we can pick them up one by one in a minecart. Whoa, um, that was unexpected. But good timing. I need my minecart. Where's my minecart? <laughs> I actually need a villager, a zombie rather. So let's see if we can grab this guy. You gonna get in? Oh! <laughs> wow, that was perfect timing. I need a name tag pronto. Do we have a name tag anywhere? I don't know where my name tabs name tags are. I might actually have a name tag up in these chests up here. Let's take a quick look. That was rather fortunate. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, who would have thought we'd get one that easily? I was thinking I was have to go to the surface, put in some kind of minecart uh, rail network to try and get a zombie down here, but this is going to make my life a lot easier. In fact, are you just going to hold something? Because if so, that might be easier than just naming you. No. All right, fine. Where is my... here we go. What are we going to call this guy? I know, not very creative, but Mr. Zombie, that's going to have to do. <laughs> so we can always rename you later, but Mr. Zombie, there you go. Thanks for coming by and checking out my area. Okay, he's all the way through. Fantastic. And get rid of that. In fact, I probably don't need to get rid of that rail. Might be better to leave the rail there. So we'll just have to see how we go. Then get rid of that one. Then put that down. Okay. That should be perfect. Alrighty. So for this villager storage and collection system, I've tried out a few different designs. Just trying to think of what would one look good, but to be quite practical for us. And what I've settled on is a storage area here for villagers. And I'm probably going to have a space here for storing a single villager, but more on that one later. And the way this is going to work, you can see some rail networks up here. So we've got a dispenser, which is going to dispense a minecart onto this track right here. And uh, that should pick up a villager if it's standing on basically right behind this glass block here, which will send the minecart up with the villager across to the crusher. So all we need to do is ensure that we have villagers standing in the correct spot. So if we have a water stream on here, pushing them across, we should always have villagers standing right here and this should pick them up. So it's a pretty simple setup. And all I really need to do is ensure that we've got some kind of redstone to activate this dispenser. And when we do power this dispenser, because it's right next to this block, it should also power this unpowered rail. So now we have to think about how we're going to get the villagers into this hole. And what I'm thinking of doing for that is we'll have the villagers come in from this direction Again, in a minecart, and we're going to eject them here. Now, we will use activator rails. Activator rails are just dodgy. I, I would like to use them more, but they aren't that reliable. And if you don't use them in the right orientation, as in like the north, south, east, west, 
rules, then the villager will get ejected where you may not expect them to get ejected. So what I'm going to do instead is let's just enforce that this will always work for us. I think that might be the better way to go here. So we're going to have this a little bit of a barricade here and we'll have the same on the other side. So the idea is this rail network will come on in and then we're going to have it go over some trapdoors. So this is a new kind of style of how we can do this trick in this version of the game because we couldn't previously put rails on top of uh, trapdoors like this, but now you can. So we're going to do something like this. Now what will happen, in fact, I need to, before I do that, I have to ensure that, now we can't put a rail down like this, I don't think. Yeah, you can't. It has to be open to put it down. That's all right. So what we'll do is we'll just leave them open like that for the time being. I need to power this. So I can just do this for the time being. So this will go down here. Let's open these ones up. Another one there. And then the activator rail in the middle. And what we'll do is we'll jump on down. We just need to get up into this room. We're going to open up these trapdoors from underneath. You can see the rails still remain. And this activator rail is still being powered, so the villager will get ejected. And if we block up both sides, the villager will have to be ejected on the rail. It's either going to go forwards one block or behind one block, depending on lag in your game. So what we're going to do now is use some of these. Let's use a hopper. For the time being, we'll just put a block there. Because I want to pick up the minecart. We'll have the minecart come across that we want to collect it. So let's put down a stone block there. In fact, I need to go one block lower. Like so. Pick this one up. Now, I do have some sand on me. We'll put this down. And just put a cactus here. Ah, might as well both. <laughs> and then we can just put that there like that. Oh, of course, I gave it a block update. Yes. Yeah, something you have to be mindful of. You can't give it a block update. If you do, then that happens. But that's okay. You can just repair it. Then we should be all good. Now that we have this rail going all the way across, the villager will be ejected. We just need to make sure. <laughs> um, yes, if you're going to do this, make sure you put on the walls on both sides first. <laughs> and all we need to do is just put in a vertical line of hoppers and that will connect up this hopper to this dispenser down the bottom. So every time we pick up a mine cart, it'll go down for storage. So with this now in place, I think we're good to do a test run. I will remove this lectin just so when we bring over villager, I'm curious to see, do they pick up any professions? Do we have any other work blocks around here? I don't think I do, but this will ultimately tell me. So we do need to grab a villager. I have hooked up this rail network that we originally were using down here. So this one will go all the way up and then we'll drop off the villagers up through this contraption. So let's just head over to the mass of uh, villagers. Let's make sure they're still all healthy. <laughs> Might as well take the rail network ourselves and then we'll bring one over. So you're the lucky test uh, subject. Make sure you do me proud. Off you go. And I think I'll follow you. Whoops. There we go. <laughs> so it looks like we're past the first test. This villager hasn't picked up any professions. That's a good sign. Let's switch this rail now. And do I have a button? I think I do. I think I can press that as well. Yep. Off you go around. Let's see if you're going to fall down into this area. Okay. <laughs> First step achieved. Achievement unlock. Let's see if the crusher part will now work. Um. Well, that was unexpected. So the minecart went, but I did not pick up the villager. Hmm, why was that? I'm pretty sure this will work. Let's uh, let's see if I'm just as convincing as last time. This is definitely going to work, so let's see. All right, so we picked up the villager. The villager is being crushed. All right, that's a good start. Hopefully we don't kill the villager. <laughs> I can't win. I just cannot win. So we have a brand new villager and we're about to run another test. Also did hook up some rail here just in case it does work so we can recycle the same villager over and over, making sure things are working. So let's give this a go. 
make sure that he gets picked up. That's working. Crushing in progress. All right, let's see if you're going to survive this. I didn't tinker with the timings at all for the crusher. I think the villager just took a bit of damage uh, because while I was working on the redstone... Oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, while I was working on the redstone to fix this area, the, the previous villager did wander around and took a bit of damage. So I think they just had their health too low for the crusher. Now this, why did you creep on over to here? That is the next challenge we have to solve. Well, you at least convert very quickly. Whoa. Um, Alright, well that was a bit weird. <laughs> so, maybe we should just see if this part works anyway. Yeah, why not? Let's kill you. In fact, can we do it through the dispenser? Can I reach the dispenser? Go. Let's just throw in a few of these potions. Put this block back. And then let's try this out. I think it hit the, the zombie. Yeah, all good. Alright, let's see if you convert and fall through. Give me back my village. Whoa! Well. That was interesting. <laughs> now, why are you on the loose down here? So, what I think happened is this minecart got caught on something. What is it caught on? Whoa, that was interesting. Maybe this block? Do I need to remove this block? Maybe we should have had this. Because it gets the hitbox. When this gets retracted, the hitbox for this reduces a little bit. Yeah, so I might have to experiment as well with this area to make sure that this lines up perfectly. I could always probably have two of these powered rails. And then going into a solid block, but I want it to look good as well. So yeah, we have to just figure out that. But the idea is I can now just rinse and repeat. I can keep recycling this guy around and then keep testing things rather than going back and getting a brand new villager each time. Now that the crusher seems to be working. So let's push you on through. And make sure things are going to work. Well, the villager took a bit of damage then. That was interesting. So, yeah, what's up with that? Anyway, let's see if the crusher will still work again. Do have a minecart in here still. That part works, the collection. Crusher is still currently working. <laughs> so, so far, so good. Good thing about this is it makes this a whole lot faster. So it comes down here. Now, why is the cart still moving like that? Yeah, a bit of troubleshooting is needed, I think. All right, well, that's a good sign. And, whoa, oh, okay, that worked. <laughs> I'm a little surprised. <laughs> and it cleared this gap. So this is all the strange behavior I'm talking about, right? It shouldn't be able to clear this gap. But anyway, it has. So I should be able to just rinse and repeat you. I'm keen. Let's just run another test. Let's just be really sure this is going to work for us. The villager has fallen on in. So let's pick up another one. We do have another minecart. It goes into the crusher. Well, at least we know this part is now working, so that's good. It's this part here that concerns me. Is this uh, Mr. Zombie always going to play ball with us or not? Whoop, oh, there we go. That part worked. He's been converted. Looks like he's going to be lined up. So the cart has moved over a little bit, so having this fence here I think is essential. So we should be able to convert this guy one more time, and uh, everything should be all sweet. We do have one more... Potion of weakness in there. Let's grab that. Another golden apple. I'm going through these like <laughs> no tomorrow. Let's make sure this guy is also going to convert nicely. Well, everything seems to be working more or less. Uh, there is a bit of a delay between the zombie actually recognizing and attacking the villager. And I wonder if that's because the zombie is sitting in a minecart. We could probably make him stand up. And... He shouldn't be able to cross over the rail, so that is one way to probably make that a faster process. But it does work, you could see that it just took a little bit of time. I do have extra villagers, I did bring over quite a few more uh, while I was doing my testing. It was just, I was just killing these guys far too frequently and I had to go get some more. So I do have, I don't know, five or six in here right now. And I do have a few little tweaks that I've made. So there is a trapdoor now, two blocks above in this side. So you can see that the villagers on the right here are basically standing on this block now rather than floating like the other ones. Now I think that was the key reason why the minecart when we first had the dispenser over here 
uh, wouldn't pick up the villager because the villager was just floating up too high. And uh, I think we could go back and move the dispenser back and that should now work. I did also make a little change to the uh, drop-off area, so how the activator rails and the powered rails here worked. So I have uh, removed one extra. I could probably bring this cactus over now towards me, one extra block. Uh, I didn't need, uh, need that kind of space. I, I was doing more testing and I found that really only needed two blocks here. So got the same setup. Nothing has really changed with that. I've got the trapdoors, but I've used the trapdoors on both ends. So this one's connected to this block. The other trapdoor is connected to the other ones. And when we open it up, you can see there's a larger gap now between the two. I think that just makes it a bit easier for the villager to fall through. That's my theory anyway. And then just glass on each side to make sure the villager won't wander off. And I also have raised the height of this. I thought uh, when the villager was taking a bit of damage sometimes when it was being dropped off. Because it was being uh, having its head clip into the block above it. So I think that has now fixed that problem. Uh, one other little tweak I've made is if we can get down here. Is I needed a, a little bit of an extra delay on uh, this piston firing to lower the minecart so I've just added in just one more extra repeater there. So it's just started to thunder up above and I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign because we're about to run another test and I have made some more changes to this area. So first of all you might notice this panel now it's because I have moved the dispenser over so there it is there connected up how we had originally with the hoppers coming down You'll also notice I've got uh, these levers here. Now this one is going to toggle whether or not we want to send the villager over to see Mr. Zombie here. So that's going to make the rail do some interesting things. So over here, <laughs> this little mess right here. So this is where we're going to have the minecart come down here. It's either going to go this way or it's going to go this way. Now if it's going to go that way, that's just going to take us right around to over there where we can do the trade selection. Um, but if we send it up above, that will send it off to the crusher and the crusher will send the villager off to see Mr. Zombie. So we're just figuring that out uh, just through a torch underneath this block, which is going to either uh, make this rail connect to this track or make it connect over here. So that's a little toggle we have right there. So let's give this a go. Let's see what will happen. The idea is if I have this turned, uh, so it's off at the moment. If it's not uh, powered on, uh, we should be skipping this whole setup. It won't be crushed. Shouldn't see Mr. Zombie. And we should be seeing the minecart appear right here. That's the plan. So you can see this is where the track come up and connect up with this one. So let's just try this one first. Let's just make sure okay, it's not switched. It should be, yeah, there was a minecart in there. So let's give this a go. I hear something. Okay, that's a good sign. That was a very good sign. So we have the my cart sitting right there. Now it has moved over a little bit too far. So if we can pick up that track. I don't even need this track here anymore. Where is my lectin? Need my lectin. There we go. We move this guy over a little bit. In fact, let's just push him all the way through. Actually, which way are you going to go? Okay, that's a good sign. Now let's put that there. I should better stink through myself. Yeah, let's try that one more time. Now let's see where he lines up. Okay, let's pick the profession, but that's a good sign. I think that's a good thing. So this button here will retract the sticky piston and should move this guy back into... What am I doing with this guy? Recycle the village. Okay, he should just reappear back to where he is right now. So he should skip all this. You can see he goes up that way. Should turn around and come back here. Okay, that's fantastic. Now we do want to zombify this guy this time around. So let's see what happens. Down he goes. Should come up to the crusher. Yeah, that's a good sign. Don't die on me, buddy. All right, that looks good. Comes down to see Mr. Zombie. Come on, Mr. Zombie, wake up, do your thing. This is a lot slower than I would like it to be. So I might need to think about moving this guy out of the cart, but you can see it does work eventually. So it has come across. Now I do have one more uh, potion of weakness uh, in the dispenser behind here. So let's press that button. There's another golden apple here. Let's see this guy convert and then fall through.
Aha! Here we go. Now what? Do you... Um. Oh, time of the day. <laughs> yes. I don't have a clock on me, do I? No. So I should um, put a clock up here so we know when we can trade with this guy. But that all looks good. Everything seems to be working. So I'm just going to tidy up this place, make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, like this been, has been bugging me for a while that I haven't put that row of white concrete up there. So I will go ahead and just make this look a little bit tidier and then we should be pretty much done with the hub part of the village trading hall. So it's been quite a while, I've been working on this area a lot and maybe not so much on the visuals but on the trading because there's a particular villager and a particular trade that I've been trying to get for this area to finish off the hub. So let's go check it out. Let's see if you like it. You can see not everything is done, <laughs> but we are making some progress. So this is what the cleaned up version of the trading hub area looks like. I like the brightness of it. I'm thinking of putting a fish tank up here, but uh, more on that later. And this guy, I've been looking for this particular villager. I've been doing a lot of trading and we finally have it, an arrow of weakness. So that will replace the need for using the potion of weakness. I can just use the arrow of weakness. And this is certainly going to make this whole process a lot easier. I can get a lot of these and then I don't have to worry about storage, all the different potions because these things all stack together quite nicely. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> so I can just put these now up into the dispenser. And you might be wondering why do we have these pillars here where I used to have the iron bars before. And the reason for that is when I had a full block here, I noticed that this would happen. If I pick that up, where's my iron bars? Iron bars anywhere, there we go. Let's grab that one. You can see how it connects up like that. Yeah, not a fan of that look. So when we have a lectin here, it doesn't join like this, so I didn't really notice it. But when I'm using any other block here, then this happens. So yeah, for the time being, we're just going to use a pillar here. I don't think it looks too bad, but um, yeah, happy with that. So let's grab this guy. I need to pick up this and we are going to push him up into this area here. I think that could be a good spot to store our new villager friend. Where is my rails? Okay. Don't have any extra rails. All right, I'll have to take this one instead. Cool. So, I should better just do this, push him back down. And let's see if he comes on all the way through. Oh, pretty close. <laughs> let's sneak on past. Go up to your new home, buddy. Alrighty. So, I could probably just leave it even open like that. I don't need to put anything there in front of him. That will pretty much work okay. We'll have to think about it. In fact, I might just put him behind glass because I don't really need to do any extra trading with him. If I ever run out of trades or out of the potion of weakness in here, or the area of weakness rather now, <laughs> um, I can always knock this out and then do some extra trading. But having him nice secure up there is essential. I do not want to lose this guy. I had to go through a lot of villages. If you want to think about how many trades I had to do to get that with the different villages, Look at this, all these chests are full, <laughs> from all doing different trades. Well, some of them are full, the majority of them are full anyway. So yes, we spent a lot of time on that, and I'm glad that it all worked out in the end. So I am going to end the episode here. We didn't get onto the villager trading hall area, but we got the hub part portion pretty much done. I'll continue working on a bit of the visuals, but if you've got suggestions in the meantime, let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. So there you have it, this hub area is pretty much done, at least the functionality wise. Uh, there is a few extra things we can do over here with the levers, but we'll do that in the next episode. And then we'll also work on the actual trading hall area. So thanks for watching, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.